Alright, so this is how to install a Spartan Locker into, um, in this case, it's a uh, Ford Explorer or Mercury Mountaineer. Now one thing I do recommend is that you use a little bit of grease. I put it on that uh, face of that spacer and it just sticks right into place. That way you don't have to worry about it falling back into the case. You want your flat side facing your drive pin. So once you get that um, pressed in and everything's nice and smooth and, and standing out of the way, you can put your pin through. You want to make sure, that if you see here, I roll it over and realize that I don't have the pin retaining bolt hole, so i got to roll it back this way, and you just drop your pin in. One thing I'm going to point out here in this footage is that uh, I do have an alignment marker on my end pin there. I'm just showing how you place your hand through there and, and you can push the dry pin up and down. It should move freely and uh, that alignment pin really really helps on making sure that you're in proper alignment otherwise you're gonna kinda keep trying to ro roll it around and rotate it to line that bolt pin up. Now at this point I would use your old pin, uh, your old bolt, so that way you don't uh, use up the uh, thread locker that's on the, the new bolt that comes with it. And what I'm pointing out here is where we're going to be prying with a screwdriver and using a, um, a set of gauges to um, test the clearances. We want our spacer to pin clearance to be no more than eight thousandths difference side to side and the minimum clearance needs to be six thousandths on a minimum and twenty thousandths at a maximum. But again, side to side the variance cannot be more than uh, eight thousandths. So if you have six thousandths on one side you can't have more than fourteen on the other. And uh, you just go through and uh, pick out a starting point. I think I started here with a uh, five to six thousandths. In fact I started with the minimum which was six thousandths and started using my feelers and uh, just placing them in there that slipped in through real easily on both sides. So I think I stepped it up to my seven thousandths and it is on the tighter end this installation. Um, so I just pull out the seven thousandths here and go ahead and gauge that up. This is very self-explanatory. Now the reason why we're doing this is we don't want to get too in-depth or involved into this build prior to um, going ahead and uh, getting everything in together and getting it all put together and realizing you don't have the proper clearances. Without these proper clearances the locker cannot operate properly and if it doesn't operate properly obviously um, you're going to have issues. You have to tear it all back out, do it all over again. So I'm just showing how the locker works and how those spring-loaded um, nubs have to be retained in. And uh, those go in next, and we have a center gap that we need to measure. So here I'm just basically still just you know talking to the camera. Obviously, I did not know that the microphone wouldn't catch anything. And 7 thousandths fit fine. And I think it, the final measurement ended up being 8 thousandths on each side, and I had no variance side to side. If I did, it was only about a thousandth. Okay, so when you're done, you need to go ahead and pull out the pin. Again, place it in such a way that you can get your fingers in there and get that retaining bolt out, but also be aware that that will slide all the way through the case and smash into the inside of your case. So you want to put a, your hand on the other side of that drive pin. Pull the drive pin out, and you're going to pull off uh, the... Uh, and keep in mind that grease has got a little bit of suction going for it, so it's going to be hard sometimes to pry these out. Um, you should be able to place your finger into one of them and pry on the edge and remove that suction or that seal that it creates. And you're going to place that inside one of the drive gears and the drive gears have a flat side that allow it to clear the case. You can only put them in one way. And I just demonstrated that there. And we're going to slide that over the existing one because the one that we, that spacer that we pulled out has to go inside the other one. You want to make sure that your faces are facing the proper way. You want that facing to the outside. So that needs to touch the pin, so the pin slot to the flat face is how you want to orient that. Again, note that it will only slide in one direction and you have just enough clearance to get that in. Then it's just a matter of getting everything lined up and then you start to pull your retaining pins on those spring-loaded um, lock nubs. So go ahead and pull that. Now in this case, mine actually falls down into the case. I, it fell in and uh, I was able to fish it out. It was right there at the bottom of the case. So be very, very aware of that and keep track of all these uh, locking pins. If you nip your pins just small enough, you should be able to rotate the entire assembly um, inside of the differential housing and uh, you won't have to worry about those dragging on the inside. The, the way they come from the factory is they're twice as long and I nipped mine in half. You might need to pry like I did here, pry it apart with a screwdriver and pull the pins, but you should be able to get all four pins pulled and then you just need to line up your um, drive pin into that housing. Again, brand new install. 
unfortunately the camera was having issues here and went blurry but the reason why we're doing this measurement here is uh, coming up is we need to do the center gap now the center gap on these I believe the spec is 0.145 to 0.170 and it has to be in that range so I started with a um, spacer stack of exactly 0.145 it should slip through very very easily in which case it does Okay, then you go ahead and go to your maximum and see if it slips through and it should not and in this case it doesn't so I'm within spec on my center gap now we just go ahead and align everything get it rotated so that your drive pin can slip in and then drop your drive pin in again notice that orientation mark for the bolt that makes it very very easy to make sure that your pin is aligned and then uh, put in your lock bolt. Now if you would use the pin that came with it your lock bolt is going to have all of the uh, thread locker worn off of it so you need to use some red Loctite there. But torque to spec, spec on this is uh, 22 foot-pounds and uh, the case cover bolts are all 24 foot-pounds so it's not going to hurt to just leave that um, torque at the same and just you know increase it two foot-pounds and or just torque this to 24 either way you're going to be covered um, again clean your gasket mating surfaces up very very thoroughly apply the proper RTV into the channel and then that just flips over and then you torque all these bolts down to 24 foot-pounds that's it that's all there is to installing the locker um, at this point I just need to go put it up into the car and uh, that takes about 15 to 20 minutes and uh, you're done at that point you just you know oh don't forget your speed sensor if your car is equipped with one um, I know the 2005s don't have that they more than likely draw the speed sensor directly from the transmission well, that's it in a nutshell how to install a Spartan locker into a Mercury Mountaineer and or a Ford Explorer or um, a Lincoln Aviator